right, we've got uh, projectile we want to launch a certain range. So we've got uh, several variables we can deal with. One is how far downfield it goes, or the range. And for these problems, we're going to assume that we launch at the ground and we detonate at the ground, or it lands on the ground. So a soccer ball being launched on a flat soccer field. Golf is tricky because sometimes you can have an elevated tee. But um, we've got to start somewhere. Well, there's two velocities. As this thing is launched, it has a velocity in the x-axis, which we'll call velocity x, and it has velocity in the y-axis, which of course would be labeled as velocity y. So let's deal with velocity x for starters. Velocity x determines uh, how far it'll go in the x-axis, and in this case, the velocity in the x-axis is equal to the given velocity times the cosine of some given angle. So velocity in the x is equal to the velocity cosine theta. And that determines the uh, range in the x-axis. And it all depends on how much time the thing's in the air. It'll continue to travel in this direction all while it's flying until it finally hits the ground. And so the distance traveled will be equal to the velocity in the uh, x-axis times the time that the object's in the air. So now we can talk about this in terms of the time that the thing is in the air. Well, it has some initial velocity in the y-axis. And the velocity in the y-axis is equal to the velocity times the sine of the angle. Again, if we want to build a right triangle to make it easier to see, that's theta. This is the opposite side, the velocity in the y. This is the y-axis. So the velocity y would be the v sine theta. It's going to be under the influence of acceleration due to gravity, which in this case is opposing the velocity, so we would call that negative g. And it will continue to travel upwards until it reaches a, a vertical velocity of zero, final velocity of zero, making the change in velocity equal to the initial velocity, v sine theta. So if acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time, then the time it takes to go up is equal to the change in velocity, v sine theta, divided by the rate of acceleration, in this case acceleration due to gravity. So the time up in the air is v sine theta divided by g. The total time in the air is equal to twice that, because it's going to take that much time to go up and stop and then come back down again. So that makes it v sine theta times 2 over j. So we can consolidate that into our range equation and say that the range a ball will travel is equal to v cosine theta times time, which is now 2 v sine theta over j. And that equation will turn into the range a ball will travel that's being projected is equal to 2v, so 2v squared cosine theta sine theta over g. Well, we've got a little math trick we can pull out. Uh, if we do this, we can say that the range is equal to velocity initial squared, and we can say sine cosine theta sine theta times 2 is the same as the sine of 2 theta. So the range we travel, velocity initial squared, times the sine of twice the angle divided by g. And that gets us there.